Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Maker, and today I'm teaching you about Cricut Design Space for your Android mobile device, such as a phone or a tablet. This is the Cricut Kickoff Lesson 3, and we're going to go over the primary functions of Design Space together so you feel more comfortable in the software, and then we will create something fun. Uh, in Lesson 1 of Cricut Kickoff, we downloaded and installed the free Cricut Design Space app from the Google Play Store, and we put it onto our tablet or phone. We created a Cricut ID or signed in with one that we already had, and we did our first test cut. In Lesson 2, we looked at the tools and supplies that we use with whatever Cricut we had, right? And I've got all five of them here. If you need links to watch those videos first before this one, they are all below this video in the description. Today, we're going to dive into design space itself and see how it all works. Before we get too far, I want to remind you about my free Cricut Kickoff Principal Handbook that goes along with these lessons. You can download it right now at cricutkickoff.com. Just register for the class and you will get the handbook. I'll be referring to it as we go along today during our lesson. There's some awesome stuff in here. So please pull up a chair here in my studio and let's get started. I have design space apps in here, in fact. All right, so first, what is design space? So Cricut Design Space is the free companion app to your Cricut cutting machine. Design Space, or DS as some people will call it, lets you design and cut with your Cricut. You can create projects from scratch, use one of Cricut's images, or upload images. And again, this is free software. So even if you don't currently have a Cricut, you can download this software free and play around with it first, which I do recommend, by the way. So let's go ahead and go into my Design Space app on my Samsung Galaxy tablet, which uses the Android operating system, so you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to switch over to my overhead view. Here is my tablet. I don't have it mirrored to my computer, so actually let's switch to this one. There we go. Then you can see our machines and me at the same time. All right, so this is my tablet. This is, a, I don't know which one it is, Galaxy Tab something. <laughs> um, I have it on my tablet, nice, so we have a nice big screen. You could also have a smaller tablet, so they come in different sizes, right? A phone, right? Um, and the, one other option might be the Google Chromebook. Now, it's not officially supported, but it can run apps from the Google Play Store, so if you have a Chromebook, this is the right class for you. All right, so this is what the app looks like on the Android operating system, right? It's a little bit different if you've seen the others. You can install the app on pretty much any device that runs Android version 9 or higher, such as Google Pixel phones, Motorola droids, turbos and motos, and LG phones. The official system requirements say that only mobile devices and tablets are supported for Cricut Design Space, and that Chromebooks are not supported, but I have it on good authority that Chromebooks can also install and use the app from the Google Play Store if you want to try. Just know that it's not officially supported. Now, I'm unable to connect my Android tablet directly to my video streaming software, so instead, I've just got my tablet here under my camera so you can watch me, but that means you can see exactly where I'm clicking. I do have a mouse attached to it, too. So let's, this is what, let's go to, like, the home screen, right? So this is what it would look like, and here is the app right here to enter Cricut Design Space. Remember, we installed this in Lesson 1. So if you need a refresher on that. Okay, so this is the home screen on Cricut Design Space. This is what you see. I also want to, like, so that everyone, you might be like, well, why isn't it like sideways, right? So it does not rotate, right? So some apps will rotate, but the Cricut Android, um, Cricut Design Space app doesn't. So this is how we use it. So I have my brayer here. <laughs> I've got tilted so that you can see it better. So hopefully this works. All right, so this is the home screen on Cricut Design Space. There's a lot going on here, but the important things are uh, the, the settings menu up here in the upper left corner. I also will call that the hamburger menu because it's got three lines, you know, for a bun and some 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 toppings in the middle, whatever. <laughs> this is the notification menu right next to it. So if I click on that, it'll tell me um, all the people who are following me. By the way, if you'd like to follow me, you totally can. So 
I, I think I have a link for it, but we'll talk about that later if you want to know. But you're welcome to follow me. And if you follow me, you'll be notified of new projects I add. Anyway, so um, that's the notification menu. You can choose to see it or not see it. Like if you don't want to get notifications, you don't have to. Um, over here on the upper right corner, we've got a search button. If I click on this, I can search projects. You know, if I type in heart, I don't know what will come up. Okay, some heart related projects, right? So lots of awesome projects right in Cricut Design Space. Cricut has made many ready to made projects and ready to make projects and you can select them and you, it will tell you how to make them, it tells you what you need and you can customize them usually like right here and you can make awesome projects, right? So that's a very pretty heart, right? So lots of things like that inside here, okay? Um, let's go back. This back button right here will always take you back to the screen that you were at. So we just tap that. I can use my mouse too, so I'm not covering the screen. There we go. And in the upper right corner, it says Canvas. This is on your home screen. And we will we will talk about the Canvas in just a little bit. We're going to finish the tour of the home screen first. But the Canvas is where we do the actual designing. Okay. And then this, all the stuff in the middle here, you can scroll it here. This is all projects that you can make. Um, feel free to browse it if you would like, right? I don't usually spend a lot of time in that section because I'm usually just heading right into design something, but there is um, a section here in the middle. Down at the bottom, however, uh, there is a home button. So you can re always return to home, like if you're on some other page. And there's a green button with a plus sign on it right here. Right. And this one starts a new project. So if you want to add a start a brand new project with a blank screen, you would tap on that green plus button. And then my projects takes you to your saved projects. So this is a, this is a cloud based app. So if you've used Cricut Design Space on another, um, on other, um, you know, uh, say you have an older Android phone and you've upgraded to a tablet, you can use both to access, right? And you just sign in with your own Cricut ID, email and password, and you can get to all your projects, right? So if I tap on my projects right now, these are all my projects going all the way back to the very beginning when I started using Cricut in 2017. So and it's in the reverse chronological order and you can search it and all that good stuff. You can, um, there's filters here. The filters probably won't really apply, but I guess there's a couple things here that you can search on, right? Um, when you're looking at all the projects that are available in Cricut, there's searching helps more, but okay. So that's where you find your saved projects. All right, and those are that's that's basically the home screen. So most people come into the home screen and they're ready to just go right to the canvas and start designing. So if you already have something on your canvas, which I don't think I do, but you would want to just go ahead and press canvas up here in the upper uh, right corner. But let's go ahead and start a brand new project with this plus sign right down here in the bottom. Okay, so it'll start a new canvas for us. Um, it'll replace anything that's on there. So, you know, you might want to just double check and say cancel so you can go save it. <laughs> just to be on the safe side, I don't really care if someone would press replace. And there we go. <laughs> that gives us a nice new blank canvas ready for us to design our dreams on. <laughs> so let me give you a quick overview of what we have here. So if you ever need to go back, you just use that black air back button. It starts out with untitled, it's called untitled, but after you save it, you'll give it a name, but it'll say it's untitled until it's saved, okay? And we save it with this button right here. This button will become available once you add something to your canvas. And then when you actually have a design that's all ready to go, you just click make it. That's it in its simplest form. We don't have anything on our canvas yet though, right? So let's head down to the bottom of the screen. And down here, we have a whole bunch more buttons. Um, the one on the far left, is image right here. And I'm going to tap on that. And that brings us to Cricut's, um, yes, Cricut's image library. All the images that are available um, at the time that you are, you click that button. I have 295, 813 images. And it should be both, it should be all images. So both Cricut's image library and my own images, right? So 
the number will vary when you look at it, right? Based on how many you've uploaded. And we can search for images here. If I tap on this filter icon right up here, um, we can do all the filtering. We can search just for keywords. We can look just for my stuff. So if I click on my stuff, I can see just it, right? There's all sorts of things here. You can choose operation type if you want just cut images. Um, if you want, let's see here, free. If you wanna see only free things, you can toggle on the free button. So let's go ahead and do that. Toggle on free and yeah, that looks good. And then we go back, we click the arrow button. There are over 3,000 images that are free. So these are all free no matter what. In fact, let's talk about that. So um, there are 3,000 free images, but of course you saw that there were like 200 and whatever. There's there's like over 260,000 um, images in general, like maybe more than that. They're, it's changing all the time. So uh, Cricut Design Space is free to use, but it also has an, a component called Cricut Access. And Cricut Access is a subscription plan. Um, it is optional and it allows unlimited use of over 260,000 of Cricut's graphics and fonts and ready to cut Cricut projects. Access subscribers also get discounts and um, a priority member care line to contact, special offers on products reserved just for access members, all that. So we can go back here and I'll go back and we'll see all of the, these are all access images, right? So you get a bunch of benefits if you have access. Now, a lot of people confuse Cricut Access with Cricut Design Space, but they are not the same. Cricut Design Space is the free software that you use to create or upload designs and cut them on your Cricut. All Cricut Explore family, maker, and joy users need to download and use the free Cricut Design Space software, but you do not need to pay for Cricut Access unless you want to, okay? It is optional. Um, you can see here, I've got a bunch of Cricut Access images, so we can tell that it's a Cricut Access image by the little green um, arrow, a uh, little flag. It is, um, you can see, I'm gonna point to it with my mouse. So it's right here, it's a little, it's on the, you, sometimes the icon changes, but it's always been green. It's always had an A in it, right? So these are included. I have Cricut Access, so these are included in uh, my subscription, right? So if you have access, they'll be included for you too. Um, so you can, you know, so if you use Cricut Access, uh, I'm sorry, if you use Cricut Design Space and you want to have access to these images, you can subscribe to it. Everybody gets a free 30-day trial to try it out, which I think you should try it to see if you like it. Most people ask me if I think that um, Cricut Access is worth it, and I think it is if you will use it. So basically, the benefits, again, are that you get access to over 260,000 images, and new images are added all the time, plus access to over 700 fonts, and that includes writing fonts, which is the main reason that I like it personally. <laughs> if you ever buy images or fonts from Design Space, an access subscription place pays for itself very quickly. Uh, you also get faster member support, um, like twice as fast because you get priority support over those who do not have access. And you get 10% savings on all product purchases on Cricut.com. Machines, accessories, materials, and more, including sale items. Um, you also save 10% on premium licensed fonts, images, and ready to make projects from brands, which are not normally included in Cricut Access. And of course you can buy C Cricut mystery boxes with the Cricut kitties in them. If you want to learn more about Cricut Access, I have an article on it that will answer more questions for you. I'll take, them, take you over there real quick. Here is um, my browser and if you just go to jennifermaker.com slash cricket dash access. I have a whole, um, so I recommend you read this before you decide if you want, if it's right for you, right? Try out the trial, decide if it's right. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a couple of different plans, stuff like that. So it's, everybody gets to choose for themselves. Um, generally, the way that I teach is I assume you don't have it so that I can include everyone. So there, I'm not pushing you into it or anything like that, right? So just remember, you can learn more about it over at jennifermaker.com slash cricket access. Okay, lots of questions and answers there. 
Now I have Cricut access, and so that means I have access to a lot of images and, images and fonts that you may or may not. Um, remember, you can tell if something is accessed if you see a small green flag and the letter A in the top left corner, or yes, top left corner. Um, this identifies the item as one that's included with Cricut Access. So if you have a subscription, um, you'll see that. You may also see a price, but it will, if you've got the access flag, it will, you won't be charged for it. Okay. If you ever are, you know, sign out, sign back in, it might be confused. Uh, occasionally it happens. I hear about that. Um, okay. So that's access and that's images. Lots and lots of images. All right. Down here at the bottom, we have something called editable images. This is a new feature and this really allows you to, these are special images that you can, um, are, are all ready for you to edit, right? So if you like to do monograms and signs and stuff, this is a cool resource. Again, these are all included in Cricut Access. So these are cool. If you don't want Cricut Access, you can buy, just buy a single image and that image is yours to use for, you know, forever, for as long as Cricut Design Space exists, right? So it's yours to use whether or not you have Cricut Access. Otherwise, if you have Cricut Access, you, you can use the images while you're subscribed. But once you're not subscribed, you'd have to pay for them again if you wanted to cut them again, okay? All right, so let's go back. Okay, also at the bottom, we have an option called text. You see that right here? I'm gonna click on that. Once you click on text, you get a box. It's got the word text in it and it's highlighted. Um, and I, I find that this confuses people a little bit. They're like, okay, what's this? <laughs> Usually your Android will hopefully bring up your keyboard to give you the cue that it's time for you to type. Okay, so if you see this, type your, type whatever it is that you want. I'm gonna put in my name, right? So you just start typing immediately. It will replace the word text, right? And um, remember, that you're, this is a touch device, right? Most of the Android devices that we are, I mean, I think everything that uses the app, it would be a touch enabled device. So if you want to zoom out, you bring your fingers together like this. And if you want to zoom in, let's go find it again. You, um, spread, take, you, you, you spread your fingers apart like that, right? So there we go. Now, if you want to edit this text, you just tap on it and you can double tap it. And then, you know, you can... You can move your cursor, right? Let's say I wanted to use my nickname. This is the delete key. <laughs> when I was young, I don't call myself this anymore, but when I was a kid, I was called Jenny. No surprise there, right? So you can edit your text and do all that good stuff. There's other things you can do with text, and but when we get to our project, I will, we, will go, we will go over those that I'll teach you then. But that is text, so you can always edit it by double tapping it to do it and all that good stuff. So let's just delete it for now. So I select, have it selected and there's a delete button right down here. If you ever can't find that, it's under actions right down here at the bottom, right? If you have to find it, it's under actions and then you tap delete. All right, and then next to text, we have shapes. Here is shapes. Um, shapes is shapes, right? So just tap a heart, add it to the canvas. Here we go. Uh, shapes are really useful. I use them all the time. Use them for making templates, for whatever you need them for. I, I use the heart and the square and the, the circle a lot. So um, when you have an item on your canvas, you can move it around by tapping and dragging like this. You can resize it with the resize handles in the corners like this, just dragging in and out. Note that as I resize it, it's not changing its proportions. Um, if I wanted it to change to its proportions, I would need to unlock it first. To do that, we go to the edit menu, which is down here at the bottom right here. And then under, right next to, there's a lot of options, I'll go through these, but under next to width, there's a little lock icon. We tap that, now it's unlocked. It shows a little unlock icon. And now when I drag it, there we go. I can make it short and chunky. I can make it tall and skinny, right? Because I'm changing the proportions as I drag it, right? Let's tap undo. Undo is right here. And we go back to our original heart. You could undo as many times as you want. There's no limit. It just needs to be in the current session. Once you, you know, like quit and restart or close a project and open it up, you won't be able to undo, right? So undo is just for the session you're working in. But, um, so you can just go right back to it. 
And you can also rotate this icon right here, at the bottom, which you rotate. So I click that and I can rotate around like this, right? And you can also resize and rotate with the edit menu at any time if you want to have more precise controls, right? And I can go back and lock it again. And now if I resize it, it doesn't change shape. Okay, so that's important when you're resizing things. Sometimes you want it to be a different proportion and sometimes you want it to stay exactly as it was. All right, so going back in order, so we just did shapes, upload. We're gonna cover that in more detail when we upload our project. So I'll just skip that for now. I'm just gonna click out, out of it. And then next to that is the actions menu. So the actions menu lets us do a bunch of cool things. This is where we can duplicate. So I'm gonna tap on this and then tap duplicate. Whenever you see this bounding box around it, that's your selected layer. So that one's selected, now that one's selected. So I've duplicated it. I can um, also, let's see, I'm gonna open up the layers panel. The layers panel is this icon right here at the bottom. It'll allow us to see um, the individual layers. We have two, we can, but once your project gets more complicated, it's nice to see them. So I'm gonna open that up and it shows up like this, right? So you can always come into your layers panel to see exactly what's going on. So this is the heart and it tells us it's the cut. So we have two hearts on our canvas. They're both cut, okay? So we just go back here like this. So at any time you need to see them, you can. So let's um, change the color of our hearts so we can work with them and see them. I'm gonna change them to two different colors, I think. So let's go to the edit menu. That's where we change colors. I'm gonna tap on edit and tap on the little circle that's right next to operation and change it and select, select this and I'll change this top one to red. You can use, you can pick any of these colors. You can pick any color in here, right? It can be a darker red or whatever. It doesn't have to be that bright red. And then you can use the spectrum bar at the bottom here. There we go, right? To have any other color you want. Uh, but red is good, so I'm gonna go back um, and then back again. So now it's red and this one, I'm gonna change as well. So I'll click on material and I'll choose, this time I'll do a custom color and I'll pick teal, there we go two favorite colors there so now we have two hearts so we can do more with these using the actions menu so on that let's just select the actions menu again if I select both of these now I have these two hearts selected I have some more options come up one is group I can group them if I want and now they're a unit on my screen only on your screen they will still cut separately but if you are designing something, it can be helpful to put them into groups for organization, okay? Um, and then we can just tap ungroup to ungroup them. And now they're individuals again. If we want to select them again, uh, we can also do, and we can, if we wanna group them and have them cut together, right? Together in the same position they are relative to one another, we can tap attach. So when you attach things, they uh, will stay right where you put them on your screen, right right there in, in, in relation to each other. And you'll note that they also change to the same color because you're cutting them together. So it must be the same color of material, right? So this is to be expect this is how this works. So you want to attach them. If you're cutting them from the same piece of material right next to each other like this, right? And then we can tap undo. Uh, we can also weld them together. Welding is like a permanent glue, it basically melds them together. So weld is right down here. I can tap that. And now you'll notice not only are they both the same color, but you can't even see the cut line here that used to be here. So now it's not long, it's no longer two hearts. Now it's some weird heart shape-ish thing. <laughs> this is how you can make all sorts of custom shapes using weld. It's pretty cool. And I'm gonna undo that. And then one more thing that you can do is slice. So slice will remove parts that are overlapping. So right now we have um, the blue overlapping the uh, red a little bit. So if we select these two layers and just these two layers and then tap slice, you'll see that what it's done is basically, right, it sliced those parts that intersected out. So if you want just to have, you know, 
who knows why you might want to do this. There's so many design reasons that you might want to, but that's slice. To use slice, you can only have two layers selected. So if ever you're doing this and it slice doesn't work for you, you either don't have two layers selected or you have more than two layers selected. So that's what that is. There is one more option here and that is flatten uh, right here, but you'll notice it is not um, available for me to use. There might be a, um, a couple others actually. But right here is flatten. Flatten is not currently available because I have my joy selected. So let's talk about that. So you can have, you can, you need to tell your Cricut, design, Cricut, you know, when you set up your Cricut, sorry, when you set up Cricut Design Space, you chose a Cricut. So it knows I have my joy selected right now because that's the one that I did the le most recent, right? We can change this though. So if you have, if you go get a new uh, Cricut or you have a maker or whatever, um, you can switch between your machines at any time. To do that, we want to go back to the home screen. So we just tap this back button. It will not hurt anything in your canvas. This all stays here. So we go back to there. We tap on that three line settings menu up here in the corner. And right there at the top, we can choose, we can, we can change our machine selection. So I'm going to tap on that. And I could say, change it to the Cricut Maker 3, right? So I've changed it and I can go back to the canvas and zoom in again. Now, if I select these two, you'll notice I can now flatten. So I couldn't flatten on the Joy because the Joy can't do print then cut. I can flatten on the Maker and the Explorer because those can do print then cut. So not all machines have all capabilities. So flatten will just literally make it like the, the the, the separation between these two will go away, but it'll keep retain the color data. So I'll do it so you can see. So now it's just these two hearts and I can then print them and I can cut them and it'll cut around the shape, but it will retain the blue and the red because they're printed on our printers, right? So that's how that works if you want to. Um, so I'm gonna undo that and now they should be separate. Let's do undo one more time. I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna undo until, are they grouped? Yes, they're grouped. Let's ungroup them. There we go. Now they're separate, right? Okay, so um, there's a couple other options down here. You can unflatten, right? So I guess I kind of just done that. <laughs> Um, we can uh, isolate let, let letters. That's for when you're using text. And then there's a contour, hide contour. So for contour, we would need to have an image that has more to it. Let me bring up an image and show you. So um, let's go find a heart. I'm going to just search for a heart in Cricut Design Space with some detail in it. And we'll add that to the canvas. Well, this is actually my heart. Let's find uh, this heart right here with the little polka dots. I'm gonna add that. All right, so here is a heart, right? Let's say I like the polka dots, but I don't want the big ones. I just want the little ones, whatever, right? So with this, an image like this selected, an image that has some detail, you want to scroll over and choose hide contour. And if you do that, you can tap on these big ones, whatever, like that, and then go back and you you have now modified the design. It's a really easy way to customize images that someone has already designed rather than doing it yourself from scratch. So contour works great. So if there's ever an element in a design that you don't want, just use hide contour to remove it. All right, so I'm gonna delete that. All right, so that's the actions menu. And then of course there's the edit menu, which I've mentioned. So edit allows you to change the operation and a bunch of other things. So by default, the operation is cut because it's a cutting machine, right? But you can change it to things like draw. Um, and if you have an explorer, you can do things like score. And if you have a maker, you can do all those things. Plus you can do things like engrave, right? And, and perforate, right? So there's additional functions with different machines. So I have the Cricut Maker 3 selected right now. So if I click on operation, and I choose type right here, these are my options. I've got cut, basic cut, wavy cut, perforate, draw, pen, score, deboss, engrave, and print, then cut. 
So lots of options, but this list will differ based on which Cricut you have. Uh, so we're going to just kind of keep it on cut and that's fine, right? So let's go back. Um, so that's the operation and that's also where you change the color. You just need to have one layer selected to change your color under edit, all right? Um, you can change the width and the height here. You, know, you can do it with more control here. Just tap on this and it'll let you, let's say I want it to be instead of 3.074, let's say I want it to be exactly three, right? And that's all we need, done. And now it's changed to three, right? So sometimes that's useful. You can flip it, vertical, horizontal, you won't be able to tell, but <laughs> I did flip it. You can change the position on your, on your screen if you don't wanna just drag it, you know. You can rotate it here as well as, um, you know, the other way that we did it. Should have been, I guess I, unro I unflipped it, right, didn't I? Let me try that again. Rotate, let's do 90. Uh, 90. There, whatever. Um, that's 180. I don't know what it's doing. It's putting in something else. There. <laughs> 90 degrees. <laughs> uh, let's undo that. Okay, so um, you can also arrange. So here, so let's say, let's bring this red heart behind the blue heart, right? Let's say it's you've got a whole design, but you really want, you know, before you flatten it for print and cut or whatever, you really want the red heart to be in front. So you can go to arrange and you can say bring forward or bring to front, depending on how many layers you have. And now the red one is in the front. So if you ever, you, know, you need to arrange, this is mostly for the weight, what you see on your canvas, because if you were to cut these out, they would be independent anyways. But if you're going to flatten it, it doesn't matter. And uh, you can align also. So if I select these two and go to edit, go to align, I can choose to, let's say, align them all to the left like this. So now they're aligned to the left, right? Um, so uh, is there anything else here? Distribute, if you have more than two, you can distribute. So if I duplicate this and we have three hearts, I can choose, let's make, let's do these three, but let's make them smaller and I'll, just kind of scatter them around like this. And I'll select all three and go to edit and go to distribute and I'll say distribute um, vertically. And it didn't work. <laughs> distribute horizontally, uh, I guess it's not working. What it, what it should be doing is taking the three images and going like this. I don't know what, but that's what it should do. All right, so um, that's the edit menu. So let me see if there's anything that I'm missing. Uh, nope, I think I've got it all. Okay, sync down here at the bottom. Sync allows you to make sure your colors are synced because sometimes you'll pick a red and then you pick another red and it's actually slightly different, but you didn't notice. So this lets you sync all your colors so they cut out on the same piece of material and don't drive you nuts because it's like, oh no, that's a slightly different red. Let's put it on a different mat, right? So you can color sync things. Um, if you want to and uh, layers I mentioned before layers will let you see so there's our three layers right uh, you can hide them if you want if you have a lot of layers it's basically all it does nothing really you can duplicate you can hide them if you ever need to like don't want to see them so now we should see just two red hearts right and um, undo and redo, of course. Now there's also a settings icon right here. In settings, you can change your uh, measurement. Right now I have it on Imperial, um, but you could, if you are a metric user, you could switch it to metric. You can show or hide your get grid here and you can um, turn on or off smart guides. So smart guides, I'm just turned it on right now. Let's zoom in here. Smart guides lets you position things a little bit better. So if you see these red lines that are showing up as I'm moving the heart into position, those are the smart guides and they'll help you, you know, get things aligned and nice and straight. Sometimes they're useful and sometimes they're annoying. So you can turn them on or off based on what you need. And I think those are all of the major functions other than upload and text. So we're going to talk about those two. So now I would love to do a project with you now. Everything I've talked about is in Cricut Kickoff, but specifically what I'm about to do is your first project. 
So we're going to do all of these things here together so that you could understand because one of the best ways to learn is to just start doing projects, right? It really is. You're going to make lots of mistakes and it's totally okay. Making mistakes is how we learn. It really is. So let's clear all of this. I'm just going to delete it and we're going to go get a file. Okay. So we're going to go to my, my website because I have a file prepared for you. So you want to go to Google Chrome. So uh, it's an Android device, so we use Google Chrome. It's right there at the bottom. All right, so you can see I was setting up my joy. So we go to jennifermaker.com slash. You don't have to do this part. I'll, t I'll tell you. Actually, I'll just show the easiest way. Let's delete that and do go. There's my blog. It'll look different based on when you go here, but you want to go to this area here with the hamburger menu, click on that, and then tap on libraries. And that will bring you, let's do that again. We need to tap the little plus next to libraries. There we go. So if you don't have a password, which is free to get, go ahead and tap on get a password. It'll, it's like a little form to fill out so you can get a password, right? If you have a password though, you can go, you can enter the library. Oh, I have to sign in. Is it going to show my password? Don't look. <laughs> you probably can see it anyways, whatever. It doesn't matter. All right, so I put it, oh, it didn't even work. Let's do that again. <laughs> um, it, no, it did, it, it, did it work? <laughs> it didn't. It's still saying password. Let's try it again. Look at this tiny little keyboard. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, so the password is free, you just request it. So here is my library. This is where I keep all of my projects, all of my free projects, they're all in here. And I have put our project for today at the top of the list, but depending on when you watch this video, it may or it may not be at the top of the list. You're looking for the Cricut Kickoff Project. In your handbook, because you don't have to remember all of this, it tells you where to get it, okay? So you can just, right now, just watch, but you can, I don't have a page it's on. Here we go. It is number 277 in my library. I have updated it. So if you've done Cricut Kickoff before, it is a new design. Um, so, and so if your design does not match what you see on my screen, that just means I've updated it. So go look for the new one. So I'm going to tap right here um, on where it says click here to download the certificate file to download it to my Android. Um, the way that my library works is I put the file first in the list, and then the second link is the project, the tutorial. Okay, so, and it's the same here. First the file, and then the project. So I'm going to tap on this. It will download. It tells us that it's downloading right here at the top, and it says open. So I'm going to tap on open. And it says open with my files or something. I don't even know what that is. We're going to say my files. We want my files. So tap with my files always. All right, so here it is. I've downloaded it. So you can see I downloaded it today. Now it is a, a compressed file for easier delivery. So we need to uncompress it. So let's tap on this and on your Android, it's called extract, okay? Not uncompress or decompress, but that's all kind of the same thing, okay? So you need to open it, um, un unzip it, unzip, extract, decompress, Uncompressed. Those are all the same words for what we're doing right now in case you're new to this and it's confusing. So we just tap on extract and I don't really care about them. I don't know why the keyboard's up. Let's do that again. Did it do it? <laughs> Let's see here. Download, Cricut Kickoff. Right. So I make this on my Mac. So tap on that. And inside this should be, it says no files. Hmm. I don't know what's up with that. Um, oh, oh, I might've clicked the wrong one. Let's go back. Um, that folder might actually be empty. Let's see what's going on here. Download. Um, this is the one I downloaded, I think. Let's go back. Maybe I, it's the other one. Maybe I extracted the wrong one. Extract. I don't know why this keyboard thing is coming up. I don't use my Android that much. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, I don't think that I don't want this keyboard thing, whatever. Let's say extract. <laughs> uh, okay. Did it work? There we go. This is what we're looking for. <laughs> so 
you want to extract your file to get this will be true of any you know if you buy a design from another designer you get one from another blogger like me this is usually how we distribute files you just download them and extract i'm sure those of you that use your androids all the time know exactly what to do here this is actually a new tablet for me so it's an upgraded os too this was my old one i dropped it you see the crack there oh well you can barely even see that it's totally cracked the big old spider there you kind of see it right there so i i only have had this for a few days all right so inside the zip folder there are a bunch of files the ones that say text are just you know help files things for you to read the one that you want is the svg this one right here right if you tap on it um usually it'll you know it might give you information about it. It doesn't look like it is. We don't want to open it from here, though. We just want to extract it. Okay, so it's extracted. So once we've extracted it, we go back to Cricut Design Space and we upload it. So now we use this upload button right here and we have three options. We have take a photo. So you can use the camera on your device. You have select from photo library. So if you've already taken photos, you can use that. And you have open uploaded images. That's the one we want. We tap on that. And oops, I'm sorry, I take that back. Th these are ones that we've already uploaded. We actually do want photo library. Let's go back and select from photo library. And then we need to go to our My Files right here. We tap on My Files and we go find the thing that we downloaded, which is right here, Certificate Jennifer Maker SVG. There we go. So. This process has changed as with different OS versions, right? So the idea is that you're extracting it and then uploading the SVG from within Cricut Design Space, right? You can't just like double click it and it's gonna auto magically open for you. And um, it doesn't work that way. So, so we selected it and we tap done. And there it is. This is the file right here. And we need to give it a name and we'll just call it certificate. Oh my goodness, my screen is, can you make this bigger? No, it's a tiny little thing, my goodness. <laughs> I guess it would be even smaller if I was on my phone. <laughs> Did I spell that right? Looks close enough. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, so it is now uploaded. And once your file is uploaded, you can select it. The, the most recently uploaded one will always be this one right here. So you can tap that and then tap add, and it adds it to your canvas. If it looks like this, you're like, well, what the heck? It's just, I need to zoom out so you can see it. So if it's, if you upload it and you can't see it, probably you need to zoom out or move, you know, run on your canvas. So there it is. So this is the certificate. We're going to make this together. Um, so it looks like this, and I'm going to show you how to cut it and also show you how to draw, um, personalize this text and draw it onto your cardstock, right? So it'll have your name, not the word you. Okay, so, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm following all the things in here. Let me find our list. Here we go. So your first project. So how to find and download and unzip an SVG. We've done that, how to upload it, how to place it on your canvas. Now, how to resize it. So I showed you earlier how to resize the heart. So you can resize this if you want to. When it first comes in, it's all grouped together. That makes it easier to resize when it's grouped because you can just do this, right? You want to, if you resize it, it's got to be, uh, the whole thing has to be resized. Otherwise it won't fit together when you're done cutting it. Um, there's no need to resize this. However, you're welcome to practice, but I have it sized perfectly for, to fit on all, all of the crickets, including the joy. Okay, so I'm just going to do undo, but that's how you'd resize it if you need to. Note that I have it sized so that this yellow part is smaller than this blue part. Okay, that's the way it's supposed to be. Don't try to make them the same size. Okay, um, so let's ungroup it though. When you upload a file, it will normally come in grouped. So to work with it, to custom, I mean, I could just make it right now, but it would be weird. <laughs> it, it needs to be a customized a little bit, right? So we want to ungroup it and the ungroup is under actions. And then it's right here. We tap ungroup. Now each of these is an independent layer, right? And we can move them all around on their own, right? Just like this, right? So let's undo those so they all go back to where they were, all right? 
Okay, so now let's add some text. So we're gonna put your certificate on here. So we tap on text and we get this text box like we had before. I see my screen, my, my little um, thing is just really tiny. I bet you there's a way to resize this. I don't know what it is though. <laughs> um, I'm sure I just resized it at some point. Let's see if we can figure it out because I'll, these these things I notice trip a lot of people up. Something like this will happen. By the way, remember we just double check, double double tap that to get our text box again. Um, I'm surprised there's not like a little. Here's how you make it bigger. Little arrows or something like that. It might be because I docked it. Let's see if we can bring it down to the bottom of the screen again. Oh, for a second there. Aha! We did it. <laughs> okay, so. We've got our full size keyboard back. So let's delete that and we're gonna put in our certificate. So um, congratulations, so type congratulations. And now can't see it right now. Let's uh, go ahead and dismiss that and make it so that it's a little bit smaller. There we go. Tap on that again, double tap so we can get our cursor in the right spot. So congratulations to and then this is the return key, so click that, tap that, and then put in your name. I'm going to put in mine. Then turn on for maker, and then return again, and then type for completing. And we're in one more return. Cricket, oops, cricket kickoff. There we go. Now, this text is way too big for our certificate, so let's, um, we can fix that. First of all, we can resize it to fit with our resize button. Let's resize from this corner. There we go. You can resize from any corner. And let's zoom in so we can see better. Now, it's also not centered. Let's uh, move this up while we're working with it. And then we'll move it back into position. Um, oops undo that. All right. So let's center our text so we can align our text. It's currently aligned to the left, but let's align it center. So if we go to the edit menu, you'll notice that we now have some new options that we didn't see before. So these are our text options. So we have the, the font name, the style, the size, letter spacing, line spacing, and alignment. So let's align it centered. So we just tap that and choose center and it moved in some weird spot. That's fine move it back. So it's now centered and um, we can change the size here, but we can also just resize it. So line spacing on the other hand um, is how much space is in between the lines, obviously. So I could say I want two. Did it put it in two? Uh, oh, I see. Let's delete this and put in two and then say done. And so now it's extra, right? That's fine. We can leave it there, I guess. All right. So now I, uh, this is really, uh, this is currently, but like by default, everything comes in as cut, like I said, right? So this is set to cut. So if we look at edit and we look at our operation right here, it says basic cut, but we want it to draw, right? We want to use our pen. We want it to write onto our certificate. So we need to change it to cut our uh, draw. So we tap on operation and then we tap type and we hit, these are all of our options. Again, it'll depend on which machine you have selected, but we wanna change it to under draw. We wanna choose pen right here. So there's pen, is it selected? I can't tell, there we go. Um, and then we can choose the pen type and color. So we tap on this and there's all of our pens. Remember I told you yesterday and listened to all about our pens. So lots and lots of options, there's black. All right, so we have chosen a black pen. We go back and it looks like this. So this is what I call bubble letters. <laughs> You'll notice it doesn't look like mine. Where's mine? Here's mine. It doesn't look like this, right? This is looks like a pen. This looks like an outline. So when this happens, it means that you don't have the writing style selected, right? And you can change that though. So uh, many fonts, not all, have um, additional styles. So right now this is just the, the default style, but if you come down here to, you know, in your edit menu, your style right here, you can change this to be 
one of the others, right? So I'm going to change it to the writing style. Now, uh, again, they're available for some fonts. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And it changes to this, right? So now we have a, um, it's going to write. So you see how it's changed to a single line like this? It's a little bit too big. Let's make it a little smaller and put it right here. That looks good. And of course you can change the font too. So if you don't like that font, you can tap on edit and do under font name. You can use any font, right? There's all the fonts. Cricut fonts are under the first tab. System fonts, those are fonts that are on your device. So those are all, those are all free fonts. Fonts over here may or may not be free, right? If you have access, they're free to use. If you don't, you can buy them. There are free fonts. If you tap on filter, you can look for free fonts right here. And you go back and it'll show you all the fonts that are free. The one that I've chosen, uh, Cricut Sans, it is free, right? So we have so Cricut Sans. <clears throat> filter can also tell you um, whether it's a writing font or not. So we can tap on writing right here and then go back. So now we're looking for just free fonts that are writing fonts, okay? So only Cricut fonts are technically writing fonts. Um, they're the only ones that will have that writing style. You can get some system fonts that are like writing fonts, but they won't have the style. They're just made to look like it. I have a couple myself. Um, we won't go into all of that right now, but you, just so you know that there's lots of fonts. It's a pretty deep topic, uh, lots of cool things. I'm gonna stick with Cricut Sans because everyone can use that and it's free, but feel free to change your font. Just if you're not a Cricut Access subscriber, you don't want, and you don't want to pay for it, be, be cautious, right? If you don't mind paying for it, then you can buy fonts. So we're going to stick with Cricut Sans. So I'm just going to go back. And I need to change that again. The style is right here. We change it to writing. So now it's set to a writing font. And the operation is, let's make our, sure our operation is still on pen, and it is, okay? Now my signature right here, that, of course, the default is cut. So it's set to cut right now. So you, you need to change that to pen so the signature is written with the pen instead of cut out. So just tap it to select it. I'm going to move this a little bit so we are centered. So tap it to select it. And then tap on edit. And then under operation, where it says basic cut, tap on that. And then choose type and change it to pen. There we go. Now it's a pen. All right, so we're, we're almost good to go. So we have put in some custom text and we've changed it to our pen. These layers here are cut layers. They're good to go just as they are. Um, this is a good time to save it. Let's go ahead and save it. This little diskette icon up here, we'll save it. Let's tap that and we're gonna just call it certificate. It can be more descriptive if you like. Did I spell that right? That's, that's, that's good enough, okay. So, we're not quite done, but I want to show you what would happen if I were to go ahead and try to make it right now. So let's tap make it. And because this, this is a common mistake that people will make. So we now are, this is our prepare screen and it shows the mats that it's going to cut. So this is the blue mat. Can I make that any bigger? I can't. So this is the blue mat. This is, this looks good. This is the yellow mat, but it's just the yellow. The text is all by itself over here. That's not going to work. The text needs to be on the yellow card, right? So we actually have to tell Cricut that we want that by using attach, which I showed you earlier. So just go back. And so if you see this, that's what's going on. And just select the yellow card and both layers of text like this. Just drag a box around them and then go to the actions menu and tap on the paper clip to attach it. And now when you tap make it, you have just two mats, the blue mat, which was fine before, oops, sorry, and the yellow mat, which has your, um, I know that there's gotta be a way to make this bigger. I'm not sure why I, we can't. I was, we we're always do, able to do it before, but I guess we can't, whatever. <laughs> but we can see it, so here it is, and it does say under operation, it says draw and cut. Okay, so that's what you want. You want your operation to be draw and cut. And then you can change um, the, how it's going to load. In fact, let's, uh, I just X, I did tap it, 
by accident, didn't I? Let's tap one of these and see what happens. There we go. So we can change it to uh, whether it's on or on or off a mat. We want to cut this on a mat. This is just cardstock. Cardstock will always be cut on a mat. Um, don't use smart cardstock for this. If you have the Explore 3 or Maker 3, you want regular cardstock for this. And um, um, material size, right now we're set it, we've got it set to cut on the Maker 3. If we were using something else, we would want, you know, smaller size. In fact, in fact, I'm going to switch this to be the joy. So let's just go do that right now because that's what I wanted to make it on. So we're just going to go over here to our machine selection and choose joy. Now we can go back to canvas and tap make it. It's that easy to do. So you'll see it changes its size. So now because the joy uses a smaller mat, so we've got a smaller screen there, but it still all fits. And um, so the, it's using the four and a half by six and a half inch mat which is the one that comes with the Joy, this one right here. So if you're using one of the other make uh, other machines, you can use, the, of course, you have to use the larger mat. This is only for the Joy. And um, mirroring, just so you know, it's for iron-on vinyl, which I talked about yesterday in lesson two. But we're just doing cardstock so we don't mirror it. And everything looks good. And but for some reason, my next button is grayed out. So let's figure out what's going on there. So I have my joy selected. Let's make sure we're connected. Um, machine selection joy. Okay, let's go to Bluetooth. We're gonna tap on Android and go to settings. Make sure that we're connected to the joy. Tap on Bluetooth. And here's my joy right here. Tap on the little gear. It says it's not connected because it says connect. So let's connect it right now. It is paired though, so it should be okay. So let's go back to Cricut Design Space and go back to our project, which was this one. Um, I guess I didn't have to do that, did I? Because it was just on my canvas. There we go. So here's our project. Let's try this again. Make it. Um, oh, you know something? Ah, I know what it might be. It could be the pen. The Cricut Joy and the Cricut Explorers and Makers have different pens. And so if ever you can't proceed, that usually means there's an issue, right? Um, something could be a connection. It could be something about your material. Let's go look at our layers panel. Our layers panel will, will tell us what's up. Okay. This all looks okay. So there's our draw layer. Everything I've got my heart hidden. This all looks okay. Let's check our, let's check our pen though. Let's go back and let's go to edit and let's check on our pen. Oh, did I select my pen? I didn't select my pen color, did I? I remember I was just talking, talking, talking. There it is. There's the pen. So, and let's make sure this one's selected on the other one too. You might have to unattach these to do that. Let's detach them so I can select them better. I'm going to go to the layers panel. If you're ever having a problem selecting things, go to your layers panel. Um, and then when you go back, it'll be selected on your canvas. See? And then we go to, um, what was I doing? <laughs> I was, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, it's cold here today. <laughs> I'm sure it's very cold where you are too. <laughs> what was I doing? I was, oh yes, the color, the pen, right? Um, okay, so edit and uh, the pen. And yeah, you see there's like a question mark right here? Okay, so I need to select the pen. There we go. And now it's got the fine, fine point plan. Okay, there we go. Now let's attach everything again. Always attach anything that you want drawn or foiled or engraved or all those good things. They need to be attached to your base material always or your Cricut doesn't know what you want to do. Just because it's sitting on your canvas in a certain spot doesn't mean anything. You have to attach it. Because after all, if I'd accidentally gone like this, I wouldn't want it to cut like that, would I? Right? So you have to tell it where to cut things and draw things and all that. All right, so this looks good. Let's save it again while we're at it so that we have everything all ready to go. Now let's tap make it. And voila, now we have a green button and we're ready to go. So everything looks good. We've got our mats here 
and everything, our operation looks good. So let's tap next. All right, so this is what it looks like on our mat. We can actually um, change it a little, move it around. If you are using the Maker or Explore, you'll have more room to move things around. It can be useful. If you're like, um, you know, your mat's starting to get not so sticky in one spot, you can move it to another spot. But I'll just leave it here. And then if we go like this, I can see the other one. And these look great. Let's tap next again. All right, so our, connect, our Cricut Joy is connected, or it sees it at least, so let's tap connect. If you don't see your machine, make sure it's turned on, go to Bluetooth, turn on Bluetooth, all that stuff. That was all in lesson one. All right, so now we're on the make screen. First, we wanna set our material. There are um, options right here at the top. These are all the popular options. If you don't see yours, you can always tap on all materials and choose from one of these, right? All these options are here. Um, and then, but what we want is medium cardstock, so I'll just tap on that. And I like to change my pressure to more because I, oops, because I uh, usually get better cuts that way. So more. And you can also tap, remember, material settings so that both layers or all layers have the same settings. So you don't have to keep uh, selecting them each time. So medium cardstock is what I recommend because we're going to cut paper. I have this paper here. It's 65 pound and 65 pound works best with medium cardstock. Don't worry about the fact that it says 80 pound. It doesn't matter. I always use medium, medium cardstock for um, 65 pound paper. All right. And if you have uh, a Cricut Joy or an Explore Air or an original maker, you got a piece of cardstock. You could use this if you wanted to. I'm just going to use some cardstock I have here, though. So, um, and if for some reason you don't have any cardstock, you probably have something made of cardstock somewhere around there at your house that you can recycle to do this project. But you can also get a pack of cardstock at a craft store for not very much money either. All right, so we've got our cardstock. So it tells us what to do load the tools so we want the fine point blade and the mat it's going to do the blue one first that's important so let's get out our mat move this off to the side here so we have space to work set that here so we can still see it all right so here is my Cricut joy mat right we take off the cover and we're going to put the blue, we're going to match up our colors, right, to the best of our ability so you know what I'm doing. So, but you can, of course, use any color you want. You don't have to use just blue. Your Cricut doesn't know what color you're putting in. And then I'm going to use my scraper to make sure it's really well adhered. Normally, we'd probably want to use the brayer, but the brayer is holding up my Android right now. So we're going to use this instead. This will also do the trick, though, okay? So there is my material well adhered. Now, here is our joy. So let's open it up. And we're going to put it in. It's like this. Here we go. See that okay? Let me switch it over a little bit. There we go. Okay. So it is loaded in. And we're ready to cut. On the Joy, you want to press the Go button on your on Design Space. But if you have a Maker or Explorer, you'll press the button on your machine. So let's go ahead and start cutting. There we go. It'll take a few minutes to cut. And uh, that's it. So some things to remember about cutting. Make sure that you, you, your mat is nice and sticky and that you've really pressed your paper or other material down onto it. Use your scraper or a brayer. You have to just press down with your fingers. Um, make sure your blade is clean. I told everybody how to clean their blades yesterday in lesson two. And then make sure you're using good quality cardstock. Yeah, uh, you know, not all cardstocks are made the same, right? If it's just mystery cardstock that you've had for um, 10 years and might not be the best quality. So just if you have any issue, first, is your is your mat sticky? Second, is your blade clean? Third, what's the condition of your cardstock? Those are the three, the, that's the order in my mind, right? Because you know, I have issues too, cutting. For the most part though, I have no issues. <laughs> 
but that's mostly because I've been doing it for such a long time. So as a beginner, you will have to learn how this works, right? But it's sticky mat, clean blade, good cardstock is the is the trick here. It's not really a trick. It's pretty easy. You should be okay. All right, so now I'll switch over so you can see it from the other angle. Let me switch, change. There we go. So you can see how it comes out the back as it cuts, right? And it's just moving back and forth in the machine. Now it's doing the blue layer and the blue layer was cut only. So when we switch to the yellow layer, we're gonna need to put our pen in. If you were to cut this on like the Maker 3 or any of the Makers or Explorers, you can actually have your pen and your blade in at the same time. All right, so it is now done. So switching back over here, it tells us it's done and says um, to unload it. So we tap this right here. On the Maker and Explorer, you would unload with the button on your machine. And this is what it looks like. Does that look awesome? So remember we flip our, our uh, mat over onto our work surface. And we peel our mat away from our project. This prevents ripping and tearing and curling of our paper. And this, just always do this for all your materials. This is what you've got when you're done. So we can take that off. This is the finished. There we go. Doesn't that look awesome? Look how beautiful that is. Sometimes you'll have a little bits that didn't come out. You can just poke them out or take them out. And then you've got your mat here and you'll want to use your scraper again. Here it is. To clean it, right? So you just go like this and it takes it all off like that. And then we're going to put on our yellow sheet. Just like this. We go and we'll use our scraper again to make sure it's stuck on there really well. It really makes a difference in how well it cuts. Okay, so if you don't have that, just use your fingers and push it down. All right, now let's put it into our machine. Now, oh, but wait, it tells us to put the pen in, right? So, cause this layer has pen. So let's put our pen in. Here's our Cricut. This will be the same whether it's um, the maker right? It's got its pen slot back here. The maker, the Joy only has one clamp, so you have to switch them out. So here's the pen that came with the Joy. We just put that right in there, put the cap on so we don't forget it, and then close the clamp, and that's it. And then we can go ahead and load our material. The Joy will detect it as soon as you put it in, and it'll, it'll load it for you. The Joy is a, you know, a friendly little machine. If you're using the Maker or Explore, you'll want to use your load and unload button like we did in lesson one. Okay, so it is, this is ready to go and we tap go. There we go. Why is it telling me to unload? <laughs> did I miss something? It's not complete. Let's make it again. Let's try that again. I don't know what it's doing. All right, so. Let's load it in again. Oh, am, is it hitting the back of my... Make sure you got space behind your joy. All right, let's go ahead and do it again. Okay, now it's going to draw. You can see it drawing here. It'll tell you its progress as it come, goes along, and I'll switch over so you can watch it draw. So it'll go from the top um, down. So, you know, we put our paper on the little mat like this, but on the bigger mats, it'll be in the regular landscape format. But it doesn't draw the way that it would draw if it was, you, you know, you just doing it. It'll draw it from the top down, right? So don't be surprised by that. And it tells us progress is going along it's at 15 percent so the drawing takes a little longer than the cutting sides so don't be surprised by that either we'll set our our certificate here um, one thing that i neglected to tell you is that when you put your pen in your cricut for the first time uh, definitely just do a little scribble in the corner to make sure that um, the the ink is flowing 
that and not like, you know, because if it hasn't been stored properly, um, the ink might need a little time to like come back down to the tip. So if you just do a little scribble, you'll see if it's ready to go and then you put it into your Cricut. I just forgot. I forget lots of stuff. <laughs> Somehow it all works out anyways. <laughs> So don't be hard on yourself if you if you have any issues like that. Okay. All right. It looks like it's almost done with the writing. Let me show you what it looks like. You see? It's at um, like 80% done with its drawing. Let's see if I can get a little closer for you. Oops, too, too far. Here we go. I like watching it draw. It's so neat. You can use any color pen you want for this, um, no matter, you know, it doesn't matter. You can say black, but put a different color pen in. It doesn't matter. You just want to be able to read it. So you might not want to use a yellow pen on yellow paper, but that's up to you. You can if you want to. All right, just about finished. There we go. Okay, so back on Cricut Design Space, it tells us to put in, um, it says tool change required, load black pen. Well, we already did that, so I don't know. Let's put, <laughs> let's put in our, um, let's put, let me switch it over so you can see. Let's take out our black pen. Be sure you put your cap back on it right away so that you don't forget and have it dry out. Yes, I have done that. Put in our blade and close the clamp, right? So if you have the Maker Explorer, it'll do. You can put your pen and clamp. I'll show you right here uh, in the back here. Um, let me switch here. So you can put your pen in clamp A and your blade in clamp B, and you don't have to stop and switch them, right? So it'll do both at the same time. So if you have that, but we're on the joy and we have one clamp. So, but either way it works. All right, so let's go back to Cricut Design Space and tap go. Oh, I made a mistake. Pause. <laughs> it is cutting my name. I could have sworn I'd changed that to pen. Let's go back and check. So I guess I can't really, right? Because I guess we'll, I guess we'll resume because I can see that it's cutting my name, right? It's my signature, but it should be drawn. I swear that I had it set to draw, whatever. We'll resume and then we'll see if we can figure it out. But that's what it's doing. So this part, oops. Oh, I know what it was. It did want me to load my pen. It was a different pen color. That's what it was. Must have picked two different black colors and didn't notice. See that color sync thing? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So let's try that again and see what happens. Because there must be, so it, it asked for two different black pens, right? And I, I just thought that was a mistake. And now it's drawing it. <laughs> the part it's supposed to cut because it was finished. So we're gonna do that again and we're gonna do it properly. That was a user error. And that happens, right? So for some reason it, it thinks the two different layers are two different pen colors. Well, so maybe we'll try to fix that. So this is a great example of where it didn't work. So let me show you. So this is where it drew, it cut my name, but it drew the outline because I was confused about why it needed the pen that was already in it, right? So let's try it again. So let's go back. Let me switch this so you can see it a little bit. And back here. So we'll say, yes, we want to cancel it. Let's go find out what's going on with our pen color. And go all the way back. Back. So here is our layers. So we have to detach them to look at them. Right? So this layer is um, edit. It's set to pen. Pen color and type. It says question mark. We want it to be the fine point black pen, which it says it is right there. Okay. 
And then this one here, um, edit, operation, it also says question mark. I don't know why. But let's make sure that they're the same ones right now. And then attach everything. Now, let's see what happens. And I click make it. Okay, everything looks right. Next. Um, I can't tell from this, right? But I guess I'll know this time if it does it. So let's just try it again. So we don't want to cut this one. So we're going to swipe to the side. We're going to go to the medium cardstock. We're going to select more pressure just like before. There we go. Let's put our paper onto our mat like we did before. So here it is on our mat. And let's load it into the Cricut. Joy. We have our pen in, right? Let's load it in. It's measuring the material length. Got plenty of space behind it. That's always important. All right, so it says we can go ahead. Let me show you what it says. It says go, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so it's going to draw it again. Here we go. That happens, right? It's totally, I've been using Cricut for a very long time now and I make mistakes all the time. So if you make mistakes, just remember, I did it. And hey, I did this one so you don't have to. <laughs> I'm not sure what's up with the black pens. So it's possible that, you know, they both were said that they were, weren't selected. So I'm not sure. Maybe when I switched my machine or something, that could have been it, right? It switched the machine. Maybe it got confused. So let me switch it over so you can watch it. It's much more interesting than I am. And now I'm gonna take a drink of water. <clears throat> I'm reading your questions so I can be prepared. Because as soon as this certificate is done, I will answer your questions. Almost done. So if it tells us it needs a pen, well, we know what to do, right? I'll be curious to see what it does. It's drawing my signature now. So that was the issue is because I had switched machines like that. So probably you won't have that issue. It's always, I always feel like I'm kind of watching paint dry right now. <laughs> Especially if you have to do it twice. <laughs> it's almost done. It's almost done. So and it tells us, um, it tells us what's going on. So it has done all of the pen, right? So now we can switch and it says load the fine point blade. So let's swap it out. Put the fine point blade in, right? And then we can tap go. And be sure to put the cover on your pen so that you don't let it dry out. All right, so now it's going to cut. So it's going to cut some little stars in the corners. And then it cuts all around it to cut it out of that piece of paper. Here we go. Awesome. All right, now we unload it right here. Tap unload and it spits it out. And now we have our awesome card. 
which we can remove from our mat. So let's put this, we're all done with our Android. Um, so I'm gonna set that up to the side. So here it is. Doesn't that look amazing? I think it's awesome. So again, we flip it over onto our work surface and we peel the mat away from the card and that gives us a nice flat, straight card, right? And then to assemble it, um, you just take your UR star, you flip it over onto your, your work surface, and then you just put uh, the corners into the little, little um, cutouts there like this. And it should fit like this. If it doesn't fit like this, that means that you resized it somewhere and you'll wanna go back to the original sizing. Um, and I will um, tell you what it was, just get it all in here and I'll, we'll go back and take a look at that. It does sometimes happen when you're playing with it in the beginning. So here it is, it's your awesome, your certificate, hopefully it's got your name, <laughs> not mine. And it says you are a star. And what I want you to do, is I want you to take and put it with your Cricut you can do it like this, you can do it like this, I don't care whatever you wanna do. Take a photo of it and share it with me in my Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I put the link right here on the screen. I love to see you make these, they make me really happy. You can tag me if you want, but I'll probably just see it and I'll give you a heart and um, you can keep this as a souvenir of your day and of course it's also a super cute little card so you could just use this to give to somebody that you love who did an awesome job at something all right so let's see here yes i was going to show you the sizing so let's go back to a look at the just in case you have an issue you know it doesn't fit so here it is uh, all right so let's go back all right we're all done we, yes, we want to cancel it because we're finished. You can always save it, which we already have saved it, but let's just save it again to be on the safe side. Okay, so it should be the sizes. So the, let me see if I can hold it up a little bit more so you can see it. It should be five point, no, I, I can't read it though. <laughs> five, whoops, where did it go? Can I make it any bigger? No, I can't. I just can't see it. I don't know where my glasses are. So, oh, I'm going to put these. It's tiny. It is tiny little type. I'm 54. Okay. <laughs> 5.73 inches by 3.96 inches is the blue one. And the yellow one should be 5.41 by 3.68. Okay. So here they are. If you want to look at the sizes, this is the proper size. So basically the yellow one should be smaller than the blue one. And if you want to drag one over onto the other, you can see how they should be fitting together, right? It should be like this. So if you resized it because you were playing with it, which is totally cool, that was how it would be. All right, so we did it. We used the Android and we cut it our, our project out and it is awesome. That was a lot of stuff, I know. If you want to learn more about Cricut Design Space, I just opened enrollment for my popular Cricut Design Space course called Cricut College Design to Shine. It's only open for one week. Uh, registration closes on Saturday, January 7th, 2022. It will not reopen again until summer. We open it twice a year. You can learn all about Cricut College Design to Shine at jennifermaker.com. Put the link up on the screen jennifermaker.com slash design to shine. And I will go over real quick and show you what that page looks like. It is right here. That's what you'll see when you go there. This page will tell you all about it. Just be aware, I don't know, you know, people will watch this video at different times. It's only open for enrollment until January 7th, right? It'll be open again, probably in the summer. That's usually how we do it. We limit enrollment so that we can focus on our students and everybody learns, right? It is self-paced, right? There's not like classes you have to attend at certain times, all on demand. You go as slow, as fast as you want, but people will work on it and have questions and we can all do it together. So this is all about the course and how it works. It's for all of the machines and it's for all of the, all of the devices. So Android, iOS, and desktop. 
everything. And we learn by doing. So we make awesome projects like these. And uh, we go step by step and everything builds on it. And it's slower. We, like, we, we deep dive into each thing so that by the time that you're done with Design to Shine, you feel really comfortable and you can make pretty much anything you want. So if you're interested, you can learn about that over there. And uh, if you've got questions about the Cricut Design Space app on your Android, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or better yet, come ask in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. There are over half a million of us, but not all on Android, of course, but we have many people on Android and we would love to help you out. So just let us know what's going on and we'll help you out. Now, if you also want to learn how to use Design Space on desktop or laptop or on the iPhone or the iPad, because they are quite different, all of those three are all really different, I have lessons on those devices as well. Get links to those classes at cricutkickoff.com. Now, if you want to learn more about Cricut Design Space, I invite you over to my blog at jennifermaker.com for hundreds of free Cricut tutorials and projects. I also have a helpful guide called the Cricut Coach Playbook. Um, it has dozens of cheat sheets for Cricut Design Space in it. This is a very popular guide that has been used by almost 400,000 Cricut owners the time I'm making this video. It has a section just on Android. It's all the yellow pages in the back. So everything that you would want to learn how to do on Android is um, in here step by step. You can get more information and a free page over at cricutcoach.com. And I also offer cr Cricut classes, workshops, and other kinds of courses over at makeracademy.com. Come visit and sign up for something fun today. Thank you so much for joining me for your Cricut Kickoff. I hope this has helped you get on the path to success and you'll be making many more wonderful things with your cutting machine. If you do, please, please, please share photos in my Facebook group. I love to see the things you make. It makes me feel like I'm making a difference when you are able to create what you love. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.